Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Cheering crowd sound It's concerts Concerts that made us Concerts that made us Dot com <sighs> Matt Oakley You're very welcome To Concerts That Made Us Happy to be here Thank you for having me It's great to have you now You're quickly making a name For yourself In the country music scene What do you credit Your success to? To be honest, I think first and foremost, I mean, it's something I've prayed on a lot, just letting it happen the way that it's supposed to happen. I didn't at no point that I want to microwave anything per se, as the term goes. And um, I've been blessed to have a lot of people in my life help me get to this point. And obviously we want to take it further, but it is really cool along the way to kind of look at how the journey's gone and more importantly, who's been there beside me doing it. So I owe a lot of people a lot of thank yous uh, for the fact that I'm here. Um, but it's really just been a lot of learning, a lot of being open uh, to try new things. And um, I try not to be stubborn in this lane because I didn't walk into it knowing much. Um, so it's just been fun. And I've just been open and learning. And I think the authenticity with everyone involved has helped it get to where it's gotten. All right, right. First off, what I'm getting from that is when you're accepting your first Grammy, your speech is going to be about 20 minutes long thanking people. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, I won't lie. I've I've practiced my Grammy speech a few times in my kitchen or in my car when I'm right. no one is around. I, what would I say if I were to get an award today? And it it, it almost always goes that route. So I say I get you. I get you. Now, when it comes to writing songs, walk us through the process for you. What does it look like? I think the biggest thing for me is I try to as best I can pull from real life experiences, whether they're my own or some of my close friends or my family. Um, I've got a lot to pull from as far as just what I've been through. I'm a military kid. Um, so I moved all around. My dad was in the army for 22 years. So we moved all about, I actually lived overseas for a little bit and then, uh, moving around the States ended up going to school down in South Carolina, meeting a lot of good friends and now I moved down in Florida. So I've been a lot of places. I've met a lot of people. And so I just try my best when I sit down to write. I never try and force anything. I normally just what comes to mind is usually something that I've been through or, or I can pull from and take it in a story direction. So it's almost always it almost always is sparked by some real life situation that either I've been through or some of my close friends have been through. That's right. Do you uh, do you look at any famous actors artists for inspiration or maybe that you'd liken yourself to for sure i mean a pretty popular one right now and he's been popular for a little while but riley green he's got the way that he writes his songs you can tell from the first couple lines it's real and it's raw um i really really think that the way that he writes is the way that i've tried to learn how to write is Package, uh, packaging up what you want to say in the right way in an authentic way that people will receive it. So I'd say Riley Green. I also am a big fan of the Lee Bryces of the world, the Eric Churches of the world, obviously Morgan Wallen. There's so many. Uh, you can't really go wrong, but um, I'd say those guys are the first people that come to my mind. Right, right. You know, I've said it before on the podcast is like for a long time over this side of the world, country kind of it wasn't cool, you know, back in, it was cool in the nineties, you know, when you had Garth Brooks, stuff like that, the mid two thousands, late two thousands, it kind of went a bit uncool, but it's kind of coming full circle again and getting cool again. You're hurt. You're hearing it more on the radio. What's your opinion on it? You're spot on uh, to me in my mind. It was, and in my family, it was always cool to us we would play it all the time um so i'm trying to think of those like 2000s bands or artists i mean rascal flats was always playing 
Um, I mean, I remember being in elementary school playing Chris Young songs and stuff I didn't even relate to, but I always loved it. And actually, the the way that you phrased that question was perfect because when I first started getting into music, I posted a few covers of just uh, a few country songs and a few pop songs, just playing the piano. Um, it wasn't very good, but I posted them out there and they did pretty well. And when I started making music, I always I kind of for the first couple months when I would write songs, I kind of shied away from the country stuff because I was in college and it wasn't cool. And I, as with all the artists, you look at Morgan Wallen when he was on, uh, I think it was the voice, maybe um, he was doing like these rock or alternative pop uh, songs. And I think I struggled with that in the beginning, too, was just letting go of the fact that it might not be cool. But now that it is, it it's kind of worked itself out that I just stuck with what I felt like I was made for, I guess, as an artist. And that is making just genuine country music. And I think you're right. It's, it's taken this turn in this last year. I think a lot of it has to do with the way that um, you can modernize songs with 808s and hi-hats and digital in the box stuff while also switching. You can go make a song on the computer and then you can go with a full band and bring it in, in a whole different light. So I think really just the versatility of where artists have taken country music has helped it become even more mainstream than say it, it it's ever been. Mm, definitely. Definitely. And you know, you've got a track dropping pretty soon. May 10th. Can't take the dogs. Give us some insights yeah. into it. So it's actually May 3rd. Um, I thought it was May 10th for the longest time. So we were <laughs> in the same boat. I um I actually just got that confirmed yesterday that we're that it's coming out May 3rd. So I'm super stoked. That's I think it's a month from tomorrow. So that that song is super special to me. And I, I mean, I can if we got time, which we obviously do, I can kind of walk through how that came about yeah. and the process of writing that song. So, um, like I said, a lot of my songs come from personal experience and or people around me. And this one was a little bit of both. So it was actually about uh, our family dog. When my parents split, um, they they let us decide. This was like 15 years ago. So it's not a it's not a sore soft or <laughs> soft spot by any metric. Um, but I remember like the kids got to decide uh, which parent they they stayed with. But the biggest legal battle had to do with who got the dog. And um, I I remember. Uh, and not to go into too much detail, and I'm sure my parents don't want me to bring up 15 year old drama here, but um, I just it was a for like months. It was like who got the dog, and then it ended up working itself out, and um, it was all cool. So I sat down, and I was actually in the studio with um, our current family dog, and I was like just petting her, and I was like it'd be cool to make a make a song about you know, and I've always had dogs. I'll make a song about a dog. And I immediately went there. I was like, you know, it would be cool writing this kind of breakup -y song, but flipping it to the perspective of I don't even care about the relationship. I don't even care about the physical things. You can take all that. I'm taking the dogs with me. And so that's where it came about. And the whole the concept of it, the first verse and um, we'll hear it on May 3rd is just you can take the pictures, you can take the frames. Hell, you can even take the walls, but you can't take the dogs. And um it's kind of, I wrote it as just this little scratch demo on my acoustic guitar. And it would just sit, it sat on my laptop for a couple months. And then I was having a conversation with one of my friends and they were telling me about a breakup they went through. And they were like, in the middle of the day, we were fighting left and right. We already broke up, but we still had stuff in the house. We had a dog together. And I just packed up my car when uh, this was a girl I was talking to. She was like, I packed up my car when he was at work and I drove 12 hours back to my hometown with the dog texted him saying you can have everything else. And so I had this idea sitting on my computer and she told me this story. And so I immediately called my engineer um, and I had a book studio time for that night, went in there, tracked a real guitar, threw some ideas around and we finished the song that night, sent it around to some people and got it in the hands of the Nashville guys, David Ray Stevens and Phil Mosley, who are actually uh, the executive producers on all my songs you'll hear coming out over the course of this year. And they brought it to life in the way that I think no one else could have. So I, I thank them for that. And now uh, it's this fully polished thing. So it's, it really is cool. And I love to be able to provide some 
insight on the songwriting process. A lot of people think it's go write it, record it, put it out. But this song is a year and a half in the making. We shot a music video to it like nine months ago where mm-hmm. I have short hair, no beard. I don't even, it's just, <laughs> it's such a long process to get to this point. And I'm super grateful for the opportunity even to talk about it on this platform and as we roll it out and keep going. Yeah. Oh man, that is crazy that it took that long. It's probably yeah. a bit of an impossible question now, but what do you think listeners, what aspects of the song do you think listeners will like most? Um, you're right. It is a bit of an impossible question <laughs> because when I, when I write my songs in the beginning of writing, I would always be like, will they like this? Will they, or like, like you said, or, or this isn't cool. I shouldn't say that. Uh, you kind of have to let that go and you mm-hmm. can't really take the listener in mind, but now that it's done and it's out, I do think that people are going to resonate with the fact that, um, I mean, the moral of the song is all these things that we have and that we spend so much time arguing about the real important things are either the relationships we have with a family our friends or even animals. And obviously most people have a soft spot for dogs. So I think it's going to hit home to whereas it, it can get so bad in a certain point and say in this situation, it's a relationship. But uh, the one thing that and me in this instance, or my parents, or this relationship I, I was telling you about, the only thing that mattered was keeping that companionship with that animal. And I think people are going to, I think that's what's going to hit home the most. Definitely, definitely. I, uh, I've i obviously heard the track and I love it. And you're right, it really, if you are a dog lover, it just goes right in here, you know, and it just hits you. So Thank you. it's definitely, oh, I, I, I'd imagine it's going to be massive when it drops. That means a lot to me. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Do you have dogs yourself? Is that why? Not currently. I have had dogs yeah. in the past. I had a little uh, King Charles for, I think, nine or 10 years. And it nice. was like a baby to me, you know, the, yeah. the whole family. So it really kind of, you know, That's I keep saying goes. I'm going to get another one. When you sign up for it and when you bring that puppy home, it's like, it, it's, it very quickly starts ruling your life and the way that you do things. <laughs> the time you wake up, when you go outside, all those things. So um, but yeah, I mean, you, me, uh, I, I feel like, I don't know how everyone doesn't love dogs, but the people who do, I, like you said, I, I hope it hits them in the way that it's hit me when I wrote it and for people I've played it for. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now it's called concerts that made us. So I have to ask you some concert related questions. First off as a concert gore, what concerts do you think have made you? So I, th- that's a great question because I have a very relevant answer. Um, obviously, when I was in college and uh, the immediate when I graduated, I graduated in 2022. But I would do just these little dive bar shows uh, when I was starting out. And that, there's some there's some fun in that. I like there's you just go up there and you got your cup, crowd of 100 people and your buddies are out there. But uh, my first big concert was last year. And it kind of like springboarded all of this stuff that's going on. Um, it was CCMF, the the Carolina Country Music Fest down in Myrtle Beach. And it was just a three-day event. And I got to perform on Saturday on the side stage right before Bailey Zimmerman, Ernest, uh, Kenny Chesney. And so it just felt like this big moment to be able to share. And what's crazy about it is, is I went to college in Myrtle Beach. So my first big, big show I was doing it in my college town where I had written all these songs and it was just like a full perspective moment. And after that, I got linked up with a few people uh, down in Nashville. Those, those guys I was telling you about David Ray and Phil Mosley. And we just started writing. And I remember we had a session where we wanted to get like two songs. I think we, we said getting one good song would be good. Getting two would be great. Um, I was there for three days and we walked out of there with four songs that are all going to be on my debut album. We we don't know when that's going to drop, but we loved all four of them. And we were like, we're all in now. And those guys are incredible. They've had me at their homes. They've had me at their, at the studio. They've had me over at Warner Chapel. They've, they've just opened doors for me that I'm super grateful for. And all of that started kind of spiraling in a good way after that Carolina country music festival concert. So I feel like, that's as relevant as an answer as I can give you. <laughs> that is actually probably the most perfect response to that question I've ever had. <laughs> I have awesome. to ask, you know, when you're playing a festival of that scale with those other performers at that level in their careers, what do you learn? 
you gotta let go of your ego. I think that's the biggest thing is um for me right now, I love all my songs and I love the opportunity to share them with people. And it like I I, I you'll hear me touch a lot on I already have this call, touch on how I thought about the industry in the beginning as I got into it versus mm-hmm. where I think of it now. And if you were to put me on that stage when I first started out, I would have probably felt some sense of entitlement to where, oh, I deserve to be here because I'm good. That's not really how it works. Um, When I got there and I was performing and when I was done and I walked off stage, I was just washed over with this like feeling of gratitude. It felt like all of the work that I had put into that point was fulfilled. And I didn't really think much about I'm the little guy or these are the big guys. I went to their sets and I sang all their songs in the crowd as a fan, because at the end of the day, that's really what I am is a a true fan of country music. And it's played such a big role in my life to where if I am the little guy and I have the opportunity to sit there in a crowd with my buddies and sing these songs that we listen to on the radio and the gym and our cars, I'm going to do it because it's just, it's a feeling that it's hard to explain especially when, when I'm doing it. So I'm always, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to be at events with big names like that, learn from them. And it, it also inspires me because I, of course, one day I want to be a headliner at a big festival like that, but it's these baby steps along the way that I've learned to appreciate rather than feel like, Oh, I should be up there instead of them, or I should be doing it. Like I've not, I don't feel that at all. And I think that's just comes with like letting the ego go. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now, for any listeners that haven't been lucky enough to attend one of your shows, give us the full experience if you can. What can we expect? For sure. Yeah. So I try to treat my concerts as just like a hangout. Um, You're there trying to have a good time and I'm there trying to have a good time. I understand it's my job and responsibility to perform and entertain. And so I always try and engage the crowd normally. And obviously I'm like a upcoming artist so you might not know all my songs and like you said for people who haven't been yet um i'll give them some background on this song just real quick maybe 30 seconds this song is this and this is how i wrote it and this is why i wrote it and then i'll get into it and it's um it's one of those things where i don't ever want to just go up there and yell at people through a microphone even if it (laughs) sounds good that's kind of what it feels like and so i try and engage the crowd throw some high fives here and there talk to them and tell them about what's going on or where the song came from. And just, I think engaging and then bringing the energy when it, when it is time to sing and it is time to yell through that microphone, I, I try and do it as energetic as I possibly can. Right. Right. Sounds like a hell of a show. Is there any fan encounters that kind of stick in your mind? For sure. Um, so at one of my concerts, um, I was performing and and when I was done and this was the first time anyone's ever asked for my autograph. And uh, I was just, I was helping the sound guys. I was, you need any help. I was giving them my in-ears. I was giving them my receivers. Um, We had to pack up some of the laptop stuff. And there was this girl just waiting at the front of the stage and people were funneling out. And I was like, Oh, like maybe she wants to say hi. And I walked over and, and she was like super like happy that I was saying what's up to her. And in in my mind, I'm just, I'm just, me like I'm just I'm I w- I'm not big yet and so she was like would you be willing to like sign my cowboy hat and it was this pink cowboy hat and I signed it and took a picture with her and walked away and I, I realized in that moment where it's like that's really what I want to be is like th- the ability to because I was that kid who wanted the high fives and wanted the autographs when I was like eight or nine years old and even though in my mind it, it's not a big deal because I haven't quite made it yet. But when I do make it, my goal is to be able to do all those things and never get too ahead of myself. Always be ready to slow down and, and be able to give those experiences to people because you never know who's in the crowd. There could be a version of me at yeah. one of my shows who wants to make music and maybe an interaction will spark that. So just treating everything with humility is what I got from that interaction. So I'd say that was probably my biggest fan and interaction that stuck out in my head. I like it. I like it. And we love hearing about these stories now. Is there a gig that you played where maybe everything went wrong and how did you overcome it? <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so I was playing this show and um, I didn't have a band. I just had my guitarist. And so we had to line in. And for those who don't know, lining in is basically taking tracks that you aren't playing live and direct lining them in from a computer into the system. So it plays it and you sing over top of it. 
And so um, it kept cutting out. And the, we figured out it was doing it in sound check and we figured out that it was a cable that was loose. And so we duct tape it and made it tight. And so uh, there was like this little countdown going on. It was like five, four, three, two, one. I came out of the back and uh, I went on stage when it's the mic and the song, we, we clicked, they clicked play on the backing track and nothing was playing. Oh, and, I'm like, no. and so I just laughed it off and I was like, oh, we got some technical difficulties and we got it going. We're like three songs in. Um, and then halfway through the fourth song, it, everything just cuts out. And it was an original song of mine that I hadn't released. And I was like, I didn't really know how to play it off. And so I was just oh, like, man. and that's all, I, I just played it off as like, and that's all, like, it was a teaser. I was like, mm. that's all I can play for y'all. Like, unfortunately, <laughs> like we're still trying to finish it, but that I wanted to play you at least that much. And I looked back at, um, my buddy who was running my sound and he was like, like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, we have to figure it out. So. The rest of that show in the back of my, it's hard to perform in general because you got to let go of those nerves, but then tacking on the fact that at any given time, it could just cut out. That was so nerve wracking. So that was, I take soundcheck a whole lot serious, more serious now after that experience. That's so. so. <laughs> oh my God. It was and bad. I'm glad you brought up nerves because how do you you know, before showtime, what's your pre-show and your post-show? How do you psych yourself up? And then afterwards, how do you wind down? Yeah, so uh, I I tend to, I usually always just pray before I go up there. And I'll just, regardless of if people like it or don't like it, I just pray for a good show. And I hope everything can go as smooth as possible. Um, and that kind of gets me through a lot of it. Because I know in that moment, I've, I've given it up to God. And at that point, whatever, however it comes off on my behalf is how it's going to be. Uh, perceived so i normally just hang out with the boys in the back have some of my buddies in the back room with me and like i said just treating it like a hangout coming out there saying what's up and then diving into it i'm i'm not at a point where i'm playing you know five thousand ten thousand caps uh, so it's like it's a couple hundred people at most right now uh at the stage i'm at in my career so it's like like i said everyone there is just let's hang out let's have a good time mm -hmm. Still in all, though, you know, 100 people is the same as, you know, the nerves wise, it's the same as standing yeah. in front of 5,000. Yeah, it's true. You know? Honestly, it might be even more nerve wracking now that I think about it, because with, with 5,000 people, you you kind of get lost. You lose every face. But with mm. 100, 200 people, you see everybody and whether or not they're liking it <laughs> or not. And I'll tell you what, like if 50 percent of the crowd claps and it's only a hundred people, it doesn't sound nearly as loud as if a thousand people are there and 500 people are clapping, you know? So it's, it's like, it's one of those things, know where you're at. Don't make it, don't psych yourself out. Just go out there. And I think, like I said about the writing side of things, people can sense like your authenticity in your words. I think people can also sense like your nerves and your confidence and singing and performing, I think all has to do with how confident you are going into it. So I try and hype myself up beforehand. Right. Right. And before we dive into the last couple of questions, then future plans that are set in stone, more music gigs. I know you're playing Patriots Fest. Yep. So we're over the course of this year. Um, I'll just go on the, on the release and music side first, and then we can talk about shows. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> like I said, uh, when I, after that uh, festival last summer and I went down to Nashville and we just hit it off, we were like, let's just write it. Let's write a project. I've never written an album um, or released an album. It's only been singles. And so um, it's done. The album's finished, which is such a cool feeling to have. And so over the next couple months, we're going to be releasing singles leading up to it. And then when it's time and we feel like it's appropriate and who knows, maybe a song or two will sneak onto it that we, that we're finishing up now. Um, but that's what the next 12 months looks like in terms of putting music out. Um, but as far as shows go, I've got, like you said, the Patriots Fest. I'm super stoked to do that. Um, Ted Nugent, Three Doors Down, Big and Rich, like they some classic names yeah. that are going to be at this festival. And so the fact that it's one day um, and everyone's funneled, uh, to check out the acts is going to be really cool. So I, and it's also like, like I said, I'm a military kid. And so being able to be out there and the whole point of the fest is to bring attention and awareness to, uh, you know, just supporting the military and the armed mm. forces. So, um, it'll be fun. 
I have, uh, I'm doing a couple gigs down here in Tampa. I'll dates and stuff. I'll have to figure it out. I'm not great with my calendar, but, um, (laughs) we're looking forward to once we get, we put a pause on like going out and doing shows until we get some of the new stuff out. And I think ultimately the goal is to center some either regional, regional small cap tour or, like a college tour once the album comes out and so I can just go out there and rip the new songs because I really am I'm really proud of where I'm at now as a musician versus what's out I'm not saying what's what's out on Spotify and Apple and all that is bad I think it's all great but this music is such a step forward from all of that I'm just excited to get it out in the world and start playing it but obviously as you know there's steps to it and you got to kind of walk the line per se so that's just what i'm doing right now and i'll take it as it goes right you know i i can't move on without asking you what can we expect from the album then when it finally does drop i uh shoot (laughs) in my mind it's classic i just and that's the word that keeps getting thrown around in rooms and where it really hit me is um you know people from people who have been in this industry for 10, 15, 20 years, or people who are high up in A&R and at major labels. Um, I've sat down and I've, I've played through it with them. And the word that keeps getting thrown around is like a classic it's, and I, and that, and I wasn't the one that threw that on there. So for me to hear that from people who have been around music their whole life, I mean, I hope that's how it's received by the world, but there's, as far as what to expect, um, I'm, I'm shoot, we're shooting, for, like I said, we may sneak a song or two on there. So we're shooting for between 10 to 15 songs. Um, there's, there's super like energetic and loud songs. There is slow love songs. There is uh, party songs. There's solo songs. There's like, there's, there's just everything there's. And it's the thing I like about this project is um, it being my first one. I wanted it to be um, like, I sang all the backgrounds. I sang all the harmonies. There's no features. And so it's just, I want to be able to give the world like something that's just completely who I think I am as an artist and as a person, um, all drawn, all the songs are drawn from something that I've gone through, or like I said, people I know have gone through. And so it's just a version of me that I'm putting out in the world for people. And um, I'm just excited to get there whenever we do get there. Right. Right. Try a light a fire under them or something, get them to release it sooner. I'm, I'm participating here in it now. I'm sure lots of others are. Hopefully a couple months is the max, but we'll see. It's and if here, like you said, if if can't take the dogs goes crazy, then there's you never know how quickly we'll be wanting to get a full project out. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, we'll uh, we'll dive into the last couple of questions. These are a few random fun ones, but I'm intrigued to see your answers. First off, if you could, <clears throat> if you had to spend 24 hours locked in a room with any musician from history, who would it be? Damn. I feel like in his, dead or alive. Yeah, can be dead or alive. Elvis, Elvis Presley. I like it. A man after Elvis my own Presley. heart. <laughs> so I uh just a little background on that. Uh when I was little, like when I was like five years old, we had one of them Harry Potter closets in our basement where like under the staircase. And I, I, they basically let me use it and I made it like an Elvis, like fan club almost, but it was just, I would go in there and I would play his songs through a CD player and I'd have posters of Elvis and like concerts he's done and all that stuff. And I was just, I had ornaments that played like Elvis songs. I was just, I loved, he, I would say like that is what sparked my love for music. And so if I could be locked in a studio and, or just pick his brain for a day, that would be the obviously it's impossible, but um, you said dead or alive, so that's an easy that's an easy one for me. Yeah, the, what I'm going to say next now, I'm sure there's listeners and viewers saying, "Oh, he's not saying that again." But I am a, I couldn't agree more. I'm a massive Elvis fan. When I was a kid, five six, I used to collect his CDs and albums. I'm pretty sure I have nearly everything he ever recorded. So I oh. I love that myself. But good pick. The next one, what are you currently obsessed with? It can be a book, food, movie, anything. I mean, it's going to sound a little boring because we've talked about it the whole time, but I feel like every single day I'm I'm either working or writing a new song. And so I think 
songwriting and the creation and the artistic side of music is what I'm obsessed with now. But if I take it away and I go more personal, I, I mean, I try and spend as much time. With, I, I love my family. I love my friends. And so I'm always the one to be willing to hop on a plane and uh, go visit some buddies or hop on a plane and go visit my family. Or if I haven't seen my mom or dad in too long, uh, I just feel like, you know, those kind of, those people who I've been supporting that side of me also support like the real me and I support them. And so it's just, I'd say you can't really beat either, whether it's going to the gym or going to the beach or going to a nice dinner with some buddies. I mean, that's, I put that at the top of my list of hobbies or I wouldn't, I really wouldn't call it an obsession because it's just it's something done out of like the love and, and all that stuff. Yeah. So as far as obsession, I think I'd have to stick with the songwriting. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And the final one, what is your go-to album? When I like for what I listen to mm. right now or all time, all time, one you I, can't put it down. Crazy. I'd say Ed Sheeran's Divide album. Right, right. What is I, it about Ed? It, songwriting and like the rawness. He's not the craziest. He's got a great voice and a great tone, but he's not the craziest singer in the world. And so uh, his ability to like the way he tells stories and the way that he can like capture an emotion and put it into a song. I think that's the biggest, the biggest like part of growth that I'm still figuring out. I think everyone figures it out as they go is you have all these ideas, but the hard part isn't coming up with an idea. The hard part is how do I want to package it up and put it out there into the world? And so I feel like he does that in such a great way. And that album as a whole, maybe it was the time of my life when it came out, it just really hit. And it's just a great, a to Z, like I don't skip a single song on it. So I, I know it's not a country album, but it is like that storytelling. It's got like hints of folk with the acoustic guitar and stuff like that. So I'd have to go with that one. I like it. Great one. Great one. Listen, Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure now. Thanks a million. Awesome. No, happy to be here. Like I said, I appreciate it. to the podcast conscience that made us interviews and stories tales from the bus we love taking you back to when it all went down the greatest live shows and that cheering crowd sound it's concerts concerts that made us concerts that made us.com cool.